sort of ask, like, who's sort of um, a beginner for JavaScript and coding? OK. And who's like, uh, does this as like your regular job? Who's like more of a, and who's just here because they had nothing better to do on a, <laughs> OK. That's all right. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about something I built in September. I started in September. I then worked on it and finished it in December. So. Um, I normally work in PHP, and I do a lot of business stuff. Um, but I, I had this objective last year to build something in React Native. Does anybody know what React Native is? All right, cool. Um, so I'll need to. What do you need? Oh, no wonder. You, oh, you don't have HDMI. Now this is an old baby. This is the. Uh, okay, because we need to we need to connect through here in order for it to get. To oh, so I think you can, can you do through, will this work? So you're, you're streaming from which guy? OK, sorry about this. No, 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 no problem. Oh, no, this is like for the so tap into feed. Ah, got it. Tap, the tap the feed. Sorry about the setup. No, no problem. Uh, let me just turn off. It's all right. Let me just turn this off. How much time do you want me? To, how much time do I get? Sorry. Um, yeah, so you can we'll do 25 minutes. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. All right. So this is where you can find me. Uh, best thing to do is you can find me on email. I like to write a lot of strange stuff uh, about tracking. Oops. Let's see here. Too much technology. So if you want to check out the slides, I've put them up on, uh, on GitHub. Uh, I put it in the, the Meetup page as well. So I got a question. Uh, how many photos do you think the average smart smartphone user takes in a year? Any guess how many photos people take in a year? Most smart. A thousand. A thousand. Any other guesses? Three thousand. Three thousand. Uh, bigger, smaller? Two million? So <laughs> why not? Uh, according to some research, and now this is sort of unofficial, the uh, average person takes 475 photos a year. Now, in my opinion, I take more than 475. Um, but that's, that's the average. Um, and so I found this to be an interesting data point. There's all of these photos that are being taken, um, and there's all this kind of you know, magic about the photos, but there's also this data point. Um, and so what I, I got interested in was try to understand this data. Um, and so I wanted to understand what do your photos say about you, or what do my photos say about me? Um, and so what I'm going to talk about today is I, I'm going to talk about self-tracking, a little bit about quantified self, about photo data, and then I'm going to talk about how I built an app on React Native. Just to give you my background, I'm not like a professional coder. This is just me figuring stuff out, trying stuff. So uh, if some professional coder says that was a stupid way to do it, I love that kind of feedback. Um, so like I said, this is my name is Mark. I'm a tech entrepreneur, mostly a web developer, a writer, and a rather obsessive <laughs> tracker. Um, and does anybody track stuff here? Does anybody track anything in their lives? Yeah, what do you, what do you track? Expenses. Your expenses, your money. Yeah, what about you? I track my sleeping hours. Ah, yeah? How much sleeping do you get, you think? I try to get eight hours, but not every day. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you track? You said you track? Yeah, steps. Steps? <laughs> yeah, anything else? You were telling me you use an app called um, uh, Rescue, time. Rescue Time, so that's a way to track your time. Yeah, what about you? You fitness tracker, yeah. So you were you a runner? Yeah. Anybody else track anything? Well, I will admit that I'm probably on the extreme of tracking. So last year I decided to do instead of a coding challenge, I decided to do a tracking challenge. Um, but to give you sort of the background, this is part of this kind of movement or this thing called the quantified self. Um, the quantified self is this idea of measuring or documenting something about yourself so that you gain meaning or some insight. Um, and I will admit that I'm a bit on the extreme side. I track a lot of aspects of my life. Um, what do I track? Well, I track my time. 
probably this is where I started. About three, four years ago, I started to track my time. Um, and the easiest way to track your time is this thing called rescue time. You put it on your computer, and it starts looking at what you're doing, and then you see, oh no, I spent two hours every afternoon looking at cat videos on YouTube or on Facebook or something. Um, it's a little bit interesting. It's like you collect the data and you get these, these insights from it. I'm also a big fan of tracking my tasks. Um, and I use these because I believe that I can use my time more efficiently. I want to work less but get the same amount of productivity. Um, and I've used this data to then kind of look at how my year goes. You know, when I'm, because I think if you work a lot, you get these burnout cycles. So that's how I use some of my data. Um, I track way too much. Um, this is some of the health data I track. So like a lot of you, I tra track my fitness and different sort of things. If you want to geek out on something that you've maybe never heard of, um, look up this thing called heart rate variability. Um, it's a way to measure your stress. Um, and it's extremely, extremely interesting. My, my guess is that will be the future of a lot of fitness kind of stuff. Um, and so last year I did 4.2 million steps. Um, and this came actually from a problem. I, two years ago I was working way too much. I was 15 kilos heavier. I couldn't run, I don't know, 50 meters and I'd get tired. Um, and in the last year I've done two marathons, uh, two half marathons, a 5K, and I just, I just feel better. Um, and I think having data was very helpful for me to, to learn about different stuff. Um, and then the other things I track, and maybe this gets even more extreme, how many books I read, the music I listen to, the TV I watch. Now this was mostly just for last year because this takes a bit more work. Um, and I also built, a year ago, I built a podcast tracker. Does anyone listen to podcasts? Yeah, so this is a tool I built um, to keep track of how many podcasts I listen to. Uh, and so last year I listened to 298 hours of podcasts. Um, I'm not sure if that's important data to have, but uh, that's uh, something I learned. Uh, and like a lot of you, I track my money and stuff like that. Um, and, I, and I've got all these explorations in the, in the data as well, and so I can, I can share that later. Um, but what I discovered in tracking all of this data and looking at all of this data is that I think there's two opportunities or two things happening with tracking and the, the data space. Um, and you're seeing this in startups, and you're seeing this in like kind of the Singapore government thinking about stuff as well. Um, the first thing I noticed is that there's still a lot of work to be done from deriving meaning, insight, and, and stuff. There's all this data, but we're not really doing anything with it, or there's a lot of opportunities to, to do it. The second thing I learned um, is I think there's still a lot of new data points to discover. Um, so like I said, you know, working with the data and then getting more, more data. Um, and in thinking about this over an entire year, I kind of came up with an idea for a data point to track and to find insight. Um, and that's your photo data. Uh, there's sort of two sides to your photo data, right? There's, does anyone know what computer vision is? What's computer vision? It's right, like computers are able to understand what is in the photo, right? Like, you know, Google looks at all your photos and says, you're taking all these photos of mountains or cats or you know sexy girls or whatever. Um, but there's this other kind of data that I was surprised nobody was, was thinking about or looking at. And that's the metadata, the context data. Um, and so metadata is, is quite simple. It's the extra baggage. So when you take a photo, it, it tracks a lot of different things. It tracks the camera you used, the time you took it, the place you took it, and all kinds of like extra stuff. And it's like the baggage. But basically the metadata puts your photos in context. And so what I was thinking about, I'm like, damn it, there's all of these photos, but I don't really get any stories out of it. I don't really understand anything about it. So I kind of started digging in on this data. So I just took my photos and I started pulling out the data with all kinds of different tools like Python and all kinds of stuff. And I found there's some different aspects of metadata that we can collect. Or the data is already on there, right? Location, date, camera type, all of this technical data about your photos. But there was no way to sort of aggregate it, to think about it, and to learn from it. Um, and so I started asking my question, how do you get your metadata? And is that data important? Uh, and I tried a bunch of different tools, but like a classic maybe tracker or engineer, I'm like, nobody's built it. So I decided to build my own. Um, and so 
about maybe three weeks ago, I finally launched the public version. So if you wanted to download it and like break the system, I created an app called photostats.io uh, with a very simple idea. Just pull all your photos, get all the data, and then if you want, you can try to learn from it. Uh, and so this was an experiment for myself, and then an experiment in trying to build it in React Native. Um, so just to sort of finish what I wanted to do was I wanted a, an app that would collect the data on my photos and then export it so that I could study it. Um, also, I wanted to get the data. So when you, did anybody use like backup services like Google Cloud or any of those things? Do you know what the problem with Google Cloud is? They throw away all your data, actually. Um, so only one service that backs up your photos doesn't throw it away. Um, and that's the sexiest one. It's Flickr, right? So if you're backing up your photos into, into Google or to Dropbox, unfortunately, they remove a lot of that data. And so you lose it. So I decided I wanted to build something to sort of collect that data. And even when you delete that data, you still have all of this meta context data. Um, so in early October, I had a business situation that got really fucked up. And I said, damn it, I just want to build something. Uh, and so I, I wrote down this list. I'm like, all right, this is a weekend project. So if you're an engineer, you know what a weekend project is? It's a one-year project, right? <laughs> uh, wasn't quite a one-year project, but a weekend project turned into, into much bigger. So I sat down, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to build an app. I've, I've built apps a long time ago. But I decided earlier in the year I wanted to do it in React Native. So React Native is a JavaScript um, library. I'll talk about it more. Um, that makes you able to build native apps. And so I made this, I'm like, all right, this is the simplest list. I'm going to build an app for three things, and I'm going to do it in a weekend. Um, and I had three things I wanted. I wanted to access, access, access photo library on the phone. I wanted to extract the metadata, and I wanted to export the data. And I said, all right, I'm going to do it in the weekend. Um, and I decided to do it with React Native. Just to sort of give you um, a background about what React Native is. So React Native is kind of a, another kind of framework on top of React. And so React is a JavaScript library to help you do all kinds of dynamic apps. Um, so you're writing JavaScript code, or React code, to then generate an actual app. So anybody remembers this whole cycle like five years ago where we built web apps, right? So you know, you'd have these web views. This is not a web view. It's not a hybrid app. In fact, what it generates is, is native code in um, Objective-C and code in um, Java. So it's extremely powerful. And it's built by this very small company called Facebook. Um, and there's a couple of very famous apps that are built on, uh, on React Native. Probably the most famous one that probably all of you have and you probably didn't know is the Airbnb um, app. That's built on React Native. So that can give you a sense of like how maybe sophisticated of an app you can build in React Native. Um, and it's extremely popular. I'm going to try to explain it just really fast, high level, what is React. So React is a, is a kind of... I don't know. Is anyone, is anyone a React programmer? Can you explain what React is? Component a component based for what? Uh, reusable components. Yeah, reusable components that work with the DOM, right? So it's a kind of predictable patterns. Is there a better definition, anybody? Because actually, I don't do React. I just do React Native. So, uh, um, but this is a good, a good way of sort of explaining it. You, you create these components that you can reuse over and over and over again. So one of the powers of React Native, like React, is the code is really reusable. Um, and, I, and I'll show that a little bit. But the way React Native is slightly different is you build these components, and then it uses these connectors that then generates the native code in iOS and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to skip this. So the basic gist is, uh, React renders to and manipulates the browser's DOM. Um, there's probably a better definition, but that's how I understand it. Um, React Native is not rendering web-based views. It's, in fact, uh, invoking the APIs of Objective-C to create iOS components and Java APIs to do Android components. So it's creating real stuff. Um, and the, the code you write is, feels a little bit like, like HTML. So one of the cool things, if you're really a basic programmer or just like a really lazy programmer, um, you can do all kinds of amazing things with very basic knowledge. 
Um, and so you have these kind of React components that are HTML components, and they kind of fit with well becomes React Native view. So you've got the view, the text, the list view, and you use these in a lot of similar ideas to how you do um, HTML. I'm going to skip this. If you ever want to learn how to do it, super easy. You go on the Facebook page, and it'll explain how to get started. But I don't want to waste time. So my weekend project was these three features. Get to the photo library, extract the metadata, and export the data. Um, and so I'm going to show you real fast how I, I built this in a, in, a, in a weekend in a very bad way. Um, so there's a little command you do is it'll generate all of this code. Um, you know, React initiates. Um, and I want to look at two or three different files. Um, so the first thing is the um, index.ios.js. And so that's a pretty simple file. I don't know if it's big enough. Um, so there's just a couple lines of code. And this is almost, you just do it once and you, you do it. Um, so this is the code to register it and create your app and create its name. Super simple. Um, and then what we're doing is we're sort of linking it to the app.js file. Um, and so in my case, I did a bit of research and I discovered I really only needed one API. So meaning the React Native API for this camera roll. Um, looking back, I may have done it a different way, um, but I was able to sort of Google, 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 search, 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 and there was the method I needed was get photos. Um, and so we'll just kind of skip over this a little bit, but this is the code in, in the app.js. And so this is sort of the navigation flow. I don't really have time to talk about all this, but the main thing is, is that we've got this first image, image list. Um, that's one file that does most of the work. Um, and so I don't really have time to explain it all, but you're importing all of these different component parts. So from React, React Native, we've got all of these little pieces. And so the main one I, I ended up using is this one called Camera Roll here. Uh, oops. Uh, and then just to sort of get this a little bit farther along, this is my uh, the code to create the gallery. And so this is not great code, but I, I had two goals. I needed to collect everything in the dates and then collect the photos. Um, and I then invoked it. So I, I used this simple method. I mean, this code is not beautiful, but you know, this is the code I wrote in, in a weekend. Not, and I don't really know JavaScript either. So, uh, But I, I, it's a pretty simple method, right? So you use the camera roll to then call the methods, and then you, you use all these different, uh, different steps to extract the data. Um, we, you can look at it online. So at the point was, at the end of the weekend, I had accomplished one thing. What was that? I was able to access the photo library, which was cool. So I was able to access the photo library and to get some basic stats. I wasn't able to get the full metadata. I was able to get some metadata because the camera, camera roll API gave me some stuff. I wasn't able to really export the data because I didn't have a data model. I didn't even really know what the data model was. Um, and so at the end of the weekend, I sort of changed my objectives. All right, I need to start with figuring out what the library is to get the data. I also need a data model, which is probably for me the biggest problem about thinking about apps and thinking about this different way of doing about it is I didn't know how to manage data. So if you come from a web background, you're always like, oh, I'll just, I'll just ask the database, right? Everything's in the database, get from the database. But when you're in an app world, um, it's a little different. And maybe you don't even want a database. Um, so the other thing I discovered is my code had no structure. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, and I really had terrible, terrible UI and design. Um, so I decided after the weekend, I really wanted to start cheating. Uh, so I did a couple things. I decided I needed starter code. Um, so I built my, my next version using native base. Uh, so this is a really cool library where you can get all kinds of decently designed um, components for React Native, meaning how the buttons look. You can get all these different things. But I decided that wasn't even good enough yet. I wanted to cheat one more step. Uh, so I actually decided to buy a React Native theme. Um, you know, I didn't want to do the design. I also needed to learn. So I spent 100 bucks and I got this nice looking design. Uh, so this was a cool one. It was called the flat theme. Uh, and you'll see how that's the basic design I ended up using. Uh, and what was cool about this is so from, from a learning perspective, I had a, a group of people that do their own React Native code all the time so I could copy their structure. 
Um, so when you're doing anything new, the biggest stress is you're just, you have no orientation. So when I, when I got this theme, I had a structure to work in. And I could re re like relax and say, all right, I can write code here. Their code manages the navigation. Or their code manages the, some of the data structure. Um, and so not only did I get an app that looked better, I also was able to sort of know where I needed to put my own, own code. Um, and so just to sort of get a sense of the structure, is a lot of the same stuff remains, but we're using um, all of the sort of presentation stuff is in the screens. There's a kind of theme layer. Um, and then there's these components. Um, and so that's what you were saying. This code you can reuse over and over and over again. Um, all right. Um, so this was the other thing I got from this theme, is I got all of these pre-built um, screens, all these pre-built uh, like pages. And so I could use these as the starting point to do whatever I wanted. I wasn't going to use the design exactly. I wasn't exactly going to use the features, but I had starter code, which was awesome. Um, I also found a library. Um, one of the lessons about React Native and probably most coding is use open source code with like vigilance, right? Um, because unfortunately, there's just so much open source code that it might look like it's solving your problem, but you might actually waste more time figuring it out. But this library did work for me. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit. Probably the biggest thing for me to learn, uh, and I think learning in general about maybe React Native and apps in general, was data management, data storage, and data models. Um, because I come from a background of doing stuff in, in SQL, right? And so that's kind of the way you think. Um, but what I started working, so I probably had multiple solutions to this, to this problem. Um, and I sort of kept thinking, do I want a back, back end, some persistent storage? How do I, I do all of this, this sort of modeling? Um, and that's probably because I'm sort of a lazy programmer who never really studied stuff. Um, but what's cool is because React Native has so many patterns, you just follow the most popular patterns. Um, and so one of the important patterns is this thing called Redux. Uh, and so I don't know how you, how would you explain Redux? I'm not familiar with that. You're not familiar with that one. All right. Well, you, but Redux is basically a library that helps you manage the state. Um, so you're, when you're doing React Native stuff and React in general, you're throwing all kinds of stuff into the state object. I mean, we all know this in JavaScript. Your state object can get like pretty crazy. And so this is sort of patterns that make it more manageable. Um, I'm not an expert either. Um, but one of the things as I started working, uh, working this out was I needed two, I have other ones, but I really had two objects I needed to define and manage. That was my date object and the image object. The point being is my photos all needed to be stored in, a, in an object around dates, and I needed to store the information around an image object. Um, we don't really have time to talk about this, but I can kind of give you the gist. Um, the gist is I sort of define the objects in these things called reducers. Um, it's another sort of structural stuff. Um, and then I, I defined everything in the date object. The, the actual, I didn't realize this at the time, but essentially what I got was a JSON object that I could then extract. It's not exactly that, but that's, that's how I understand it. Um, I eventually started thinking about how I was going to store this data. And so there's a couple of op, op, like, options. There's this async storage where you can sort of built into React Native. You can use SQLite. You can use Firebase, which is the Google thing. Um, there's another one called Realm. You could also build a backend. Um, and then there's this thing called React Persist. Um, and what I decided was uh, I didn't want a backend. I decided no backend because one of the cool things, at least for now, is if you're, you're extracting all of your photo data, maybe you don't want to share it. Um, so that's all stays on the app. So I said no backend. That was kind of like the challenge. No backend, store locally, and sort of have a model that's for exporting and doing some stat stuff. Um, well, so imagine four weeks later, blah, 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 blah. I figure out a bunch of stuff, and it, it looks like it looks OK. I'm getting my stats, and I've started creating some, some reports. So these are some of the, the screenshots. Uh, I'm going to skip this. So you can ask me more sort of technical questions about this. That's just sort of a general overview. But I wanted to sort of share my lessons learned. Because uh, I don't have a big background in, in JavaScript or a strong background in React Native. So this was kind of my first entry point. And what I found is as a web programmer, it was a pretty cool entry point to doing mobile apps. Um, because a lot of the syntax is readable. 
Um, I didn't get to show it very clearly, but as you can see, you have this syntax to create styles that feels very familiar to anyone who does um, CSS. Uh, so like I said, React Native is a good entry point for web developers to get into mobile development. Um, I actually found that React Native apps perform really well. They're really fast. So if you want to download it, you can, can try it. Um, when you're doing it on your computer, because it's emulating it, it's a little bit laggy and slow. But once you, once you get it up in the app stores or, or you generate the um, executable, it's quite fast. Um, the theming is pretty good. And I, I was really happy that I could steal or cheat using a theme because it, it's good to look good at the beginning. Because I mean, how many of you guys built an app and you show, you show someone, they're like, it looks so bad, I don't want to try it. Uh, and so I was really happy that I had like a theme and people were like, oh, that looks so nice. I'm like, yeah, I'm a great designer. Uh, <laughs> so I found that to be really empowering that I could get over this like, because people are so used to really good looking apps now. And they don't want to try a, a not so good looking app. So I was really happy that I could find a theme. And there's a, a couple of other ones that are good as well. For 100 bucks to get a, uh, a good looking thing, and I'll, I'll probably change it one day. But for now, it's a good start. Um, and of course, I think React Native has a huge community of code, and that's what I discovered. I could use Stack Overflow for almost every question I had. There are articles, tutorials. Um, one of the hints, I don't know if anybody uses this thing called js.coach. It's a really good tool for looking for libraries. Um, and I found that to be really beneficial when you're trying to compare. It's a little bit of a curated library. Um, I also learned that not all open source code is created equal. I mean, we all know that, right? Um, and some of the stuff I used was not that good. And so I would say one of the lessons is, as much as possible, use the React Native's core APIs. Uh-oh. Um, and sort of the, the last one that I, that I found interesting and that I'm still going to keep working on is you can use React Native code with um, regular Android or iOS code. So even if I'm never going to learn the deep technical side, I can probably build a very technical app that uses React Native for all the presentations um, and, and all of the other parts. All right, and sort of to conclude, I built this thing. Uh, what did I learn about myself and about my photos? Um, and now I've got about 100 people that have downloaded it and tried it and exploring their photos. One of the things I've discovered is, is that when I stop taking photos, um, I'm probably not as happy. It kind of surprised me, like, because I don't take a lot of photos. Um, but I discovered that if I'm not taking photos, there's probably something weird going on. It, it could be I'm sick, it could be I'm watching too much TV. Um, but if I'm taking a couple photos every day, it means I'm going out in nature, actually. Probably the biggest thing I'm like, oh, I took some photos, that means I was outside. Um, I've also discovered that when I have huge spikes of a bunch of photos in a small period, it's probably something special. You know, maybe it's a wedding or a vacation or something. I'm still working on this, right? So this is kind of the next thing. Like, I've got this data. What can we learn from it? You know, can we do some machine learning? Can we, can we come up with some insights? Um, and I, I've sort of launched this as an experiment um, just to get a new data point, a new thing about, about my, uh, myself. So that's the gist. The website, if you want to download a free app to sort of geek out about your photos, um, it's at photostats.io, and this is all of uh, my information. Thank you. Any questions? So what did you zero in on React Native? Why did I do that? I don't know. I guess probably like, like a lot of programming things. I'd heard the name a lot. It sounded really hip and cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, I actually probably didn't know what not to know. Uh, and so what I did, I think, I don't know about like you guys, at the beginning of the year, I always had get ambitious. I'm like, I'm going to learn this new thing. And so I guess it was probably in March. I'm like, all right, I'm going to learn React Native. So I took a course. And then, of course, for six months, I didn't build anything with it. And then when I had this idea, I'm like, oh, I know enough to be dangerous. Uh, and so I decided to, to actually do it. Um, I, I'm pretty happy. I guess I, I'm not sure. I mean, there's always different stuff to try. But I feel like this is going to be a lot of mobile apps are built on this. It's really fast. Uh, for as bad as I am, I, I could build something that's pretty decent. It's pretty robust. It works on both Android and, and iOS. So I would say that it took me you know, a month to do it in just my free time to get the iOS one. And to get the Android one only took another two days because there was one like, data model problem. So that's pretty amazing, right? And apparently, you can also do it on Windows Phone, but I don't know why would you, right? <laughs>
Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned um, that you have to do some native code. Or you can. So I guess you the point. You didn't have to at all. Um, so looking back, I probably would. If I had to rebuild this, I would probably have a professional person write. Um, the code that will extract the data from the photos because it's more efficient. This is, I mean, it works uh, and the libraries work, but it's not very efficient. So if you really wanted to get high performance from, because I'm not taking the photos, pushing it to the cloud and extracting it. It's happening actually on your phone. Um, it's really hard to optimize because you're just kind of too many layers away. But what I, what I learned is, is that I can create components or, a, I mean, an, a library that's actually in the code that's for Android or the code that's for, for C. C. Um, and so I guess I could see it as it's very easy to mash them up um, in the sense if you have a very important thing that really works best as close to the native, you might do that. And actually what you also discover, so I didn't show this, but all of the libraries, like so I use Crash Analytics and, and, and um, Fabric to track some of the analytics, all that code is basically just a, the React Native code is just sort of a link between the actual iOS or the Android code. Um, so that's actually kind of the standard way stuff is being done. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Sure. So the React Native is frequently upgraded and then they change, the, they break the compatibility. So how many times is your app is broken? Well, it's only been a month. Uh, Ask me in another month. Uh, I would say one of the other things, I didn't have time to talk about it. I spent a couple of days um, learning how to do continuous integration. So I used, there's a really cool tool called, um, what is it called? To do deployment, BitRise. I don't know if you heard of BitRise. Um, so one of the things that happens is as you change computers and as you do different stuff, like I'll be honest, Android always fucking breaks for me. Like I have just, I don't know. I would say I lost more sleep about trying to get my computer to use the right version of Android to do all that stuff. Um, and so I got so angry at this. I'm like, I need a way to deploy this to the, to the cloud. And so um, BitRise was really cool because um, you, you take your, your Git code, and then it does everything to render it. And it actually ships it to um, the Apple Store, or it ships it to the Play Store. And so even if, say, I, I don't have time to work on something, I could have someone else work on it, and I can still deploy it. But you're probably right. I mean, this is still fairly raw. It's only, React Native is only, what, two, three years old? It's still changing. Um, I would say the other thing, like the library I use, the uh, camera roll API, I will bet that will probably disappear or, or change. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've done React Native before, and uh, Expo is much easier. Mm. Uh, but you chose not to use Expo? Is there so uh, I don't know if I told this side of the story. So I live in China most of the year. Uh, and Expo just was really not working for me in China. So like, because I think there was just too many proxies. I think Expo is a proxy. And having a proxy on top of it didn't work. So but yeah, just to sort of, so there's another system called Expo where, uh, how would you explain what it is? It's kind of a, another, it's another API on top of React Native. So you get some more, it's some. A, it's an app it's an app of apps. Yeah, so you can just put push code too so that you can run your own. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit nervous about it because it always I felt like it has to go through another company. So there's like two sides. One, it wasn't working for me when I tested it because of whatever reason. And the other one, I just didn't really like Expo. I don't know if they're good or bad or otherwise. It's just like another company that can like screw over my app. Uh, but do you think there's a big difference in the kind of code you write? No. So. Um, uh, it's so they, they are the official provider of the create react native app CLI. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so like they're officially recommended by Facebook as like you should start here. Mm. Um, but the only the only uh, this is related to my first question is because um, Expo only does what Expo allows you to do. That's true. And once you need to access the native APIs, for example, playing the sound, mm. you, know, you have to ex uh, you have to eject from Expo and go to straight to React Native. Mm. Um, and that's. I mean, you know, I, I, you seem to have started straight in React Native, and, and that's and that's a little bit harder. Um, but I just found the development experience in Expo so much better. Like, it's got better documentation, you can, you can probably. Immediately distribute to beta testers like with Expo. That's true. Yeah. So uh, deployment is is always an issue on on mobile apps. So I'm a huge fan of this BitRise. After doing it, I mean, it's so awesome. You just 
you just hit the little button in the web and it turns out and it's post your app to like test fly and all of this stuff. It's awesome. I mean, I get like celebrate. I open a beer. It's like distributing my app. Uh, but I mean, it took me two days to figure that out. But like that sort of automation saves me tons of time now. Anybody that anybody that does mobile apps knows just how long it takes to render them, and even just for minor changes. Do you think that improves your your iteration speed? Uh, well, so the, my thing is I haven't deployed yet, so you, like, I was very impressed by it. like you, this is your first app and you've already done it. Yeah, it's just embarrassed. I mean, you just just ship it, right? You should download it and tell me how bad yeah, it is. I have downloaded it. Oh, okay. It didn't break your computer? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Any other? So, um, we can wrap up? Yep. So the next speaker, um, Ian, are you here? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. So he wants this thing? Can I turn